Welcome, Nate. Welcome, everyone. We're going to take a few minutes here to, uh, to give you guys an update on the impact of COVID, uh, particularly as it relates to mobile home parks in our portfolio. So this will be a great opportunity for everyone to kind of hear it straight from the horse's mouth. So Nate, we're, we're going to cover these five areas here. Why don't you start with regulations that have come down recently? Yeah, so um, uh, over the last month or so, we really haven't seen a lot of changes regarding executive orders from Governor Ducey that impacts operations at the parks. That's a good thing. Um, little details here and there about pool operations and things like that, but nothing that really impacts us at the end of the day. The biggest thing that is going to impact us is the decision that's coming down next week. Next week is the end of the 120-day executive order that Ducey put out in March regarding stays on writs of restitution. So if that gets lifted, we'll be able to proceed forward with writs of restitution from residents who've been affected by COVID. If it stays, we won't. So the good news is if it gets lifted, we'll have the ability to have really good conversations with these residents who are maybe been on the fence or uh, whatever the case is, some good powerful conversations to make sure that everybody's pointed in the right direction. The challenge if it's not and it gets extended is we're going to have to continue to tiptoe with the issue with residents and make sure that they're not taking advantage of the situation just to make sure we're staying on top of them. When we talk about rent collections. So the best news is I think the last time we reported six residents in our CRD program, we're down to three. The, the residents that we've been having these good communications and good conversations with, They've actually been keeping their word and they've been actually trying to catch back up. Three of those six have. So we have three remaining. And of those three, two of them, we've had good conversations and we've got documentation and a plan in place to get them caught up between now and the end of the year, which was our ultimate goal. And with that said, we're working on the third and it could be a lost cause. So this is a renter and I believe she plans on exiting the property and you know, getting out of her lease the best that we can. So at this point, all we're trying to do is get her out as soon as possible. We may have to bite the bullet and accept a loss there, but we're trying to have those conversations with her uh, to make sure that it mitigates any kind of issues that we had. But here's the cool part about what we did. The process that we put together allowed us to stay in touch with her. And when we knew she was going to cut bait, so it was an opportunity for us to, to connect with her early and probably get her out you know, at the end of this month versus the end of you know, September. So we saved ourselves two months of revenue by you know, putting the proactive communications in place. So you know, of all the six that we had in the program, five will be caught up in the one that had really no intention of catching up and skating the system. We've been able to catch it early. So it's, it, was a, it was a great program. Not bad, one out of 350 pads. Yep. Okay, are there any other risk that or exposure that we might have across the portfolio due to COVID? I think the biggest risk we have is in the next 60 days. It's these residents who may or may not have been actually gone back to work and over the last three to four months, they've been effectively living off of unemployment. And depending on how unemployment you know, happens moving forward, uh, if that cash flow cliff, you know, happens, we've got residents who've been collecting 600 bucks a week, and that's going to go away. So that's going to put their feet to the fire to either actually go out and get a job and find a way to make it work, or they're not going to be able to, you know, pay any rent. So time will tell on this one, but I believe the majority of our portfolio is in really good shape, and we've got really good communications with, you know, the residents and our managers. So I feel real confident about where we're at. Okay, any adjustments or, or that you plan to make from an asset management perspective? No, um, we're ending our CRD program uh, in line with what Ducey's doing this month. So we're ending it and considering we really only have one resident who's an issue and the other two are, are gonna be taken care of. The only thing we're gonna do is shelf that and we're gonna continue with the dialogues. And in the event we feel like we need to fire that engine back up, we easily can. All the processes are gonna be there and in place and the people will be in place. So we're just gonna to continue to do what we're doing. 
Uh, I think that's going to be the, the right approach. And the other thing that's really important to us here is we've got challenges with judges who don't understand what the stay on writs of restitution was. So when they don't understand when a resident can and cannot be evicted, um, it forces us to educate them, uh, but it really forces us to make sure that our documentation's in line. So I've been enforcing really hard with our team to make sure that every single resident who we had in the program or currently have in the program or even, in, even have to introduce moving forward that our documentation is I's dotted, T's crossed, and in the event we have to go in front of a judge, we can educate and all of our documentation is backed up. Okay, why don't you kind of wrap that up with a summary of the impact of COVID on, on the performance of the portfolio? Geez, it, when, when this started, um, you know, COVID was obviously a big question mark as it was for, for everybody. Uh, we weren't sure how it was going to impact the mobile home park space, you know, senior communities versus uh, family communities, renters, residents that have maybe uh, loans on their uh, homes. We just really weren't sure. So the approach that we took and the, the approach that we take with everything, Jack, as you well know, is let's plan for the worst and hope for the best. So we probably overcompensated to make sure that we had everything in line and we were prepared in the event stuff goes really bad and goes sideways, we can protect ourselves and protect our investors. The good news is it didn't happen as bad at all as we had thought. So I believe the six residents that we brought all the way through the program from beginning to end could have been two or three times as bad if we hadn't put this program together and been really proactive in our communication and the processes and really got everybody on the ground trained as to what do you do, what do you not do, how do you communicate, what documents do you need, you know, what do you get out to the community, what do you not get out to the community. So if I have to go back all the way to the beginning, I don't think I could have designed anything better that could have gotten us a better result. So in summary, I think it was a giant win. I'm really excited about how it landed. I think it's a really cool testament to, you know, our strategy and the way that we manage our parks and the way that we manage and take care of our residents. So overall, I think it was awesome. Well, thank you, Nate. I know we're proud of how proactive we are, so it's, but it's always nice to hear it directly from the horse's mouth. So Nate and I are going to continue to do videos like this so that you guys can get a flavor of how he runs the, the portfolio. I think moving forward, we'll probably shift away from COVID, particularly if um, Governor Ducey uh, ends that, that stay. Um, and, but we'll still try to stay in front of you guys with meaningful content with, uh, uh, related to how the portfolio is doing. So thanks, everyone. We'll be in touch in about a month. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jack.